Hello, my name is Dr. Agata Gomolka and I am an assistant curator at the Norwich Castle Museum and Art Gallery. Welcome to Talking Objects. I have a remarkable object to show you today. It is a beautiful and rare example of Romanesque ivory carving. It fits in the palm of my hand and it was found during an excavation in the keep of Norwich Castle. The great keep of Norwich Castle is a fortress palace built in the early 12th century. The scale and quality of Norwich keep speaks clearly of its important position at the heart of Norwich when it was emerging as a city under the Anglo-Norman kings. Like in every modern home, the status and prestige of every castle was vested not only in its architectural fabric, but also in its furnishings. Almost all of the early 12th century furnishings of Norwich Castle have been dispersed or destroyed. These furnishings must have included a large collection of wall hangings, chests, tables, chairs, and many smaller household items. But one such small object did survive. In October of 1972, problems with the castle's drains led to a brief excavation in the basement. During the digging, about a foot below the present floor level, the excavation team discovered a small object together with some 12th and 13th century pottery fragments. This remarkable find is a powerful witness to the elegant living and luxury enjoyed at Norwich Castle during its heyday. The object measures 65 millimeters or two and a half inches in length. At its top, it has a carved head, either of a young man or a woman, with neatly parted hair, large and protruding eyes, prominent eyelids and deep irises. At the other end of the narrow stem is a head of a fearsome monster with gaping mouth and wild mane, possibly the head of a dragon. Such captivating human and monstrous faces are familiar motifs in the visual repertoire of Romanesque art. Our museum collection has two 12th century belt buckles decorated with animal heads with large eyes and wide open mouths. The physical features of our Norwich object would suggest that the carving could date from the first two decades of the 12th century. The object is made from the tusk of a walrus. The animal was very likely hunted in the North Atlantic, possibly as far as Iceland and Greenland. The trade in walrus ivory was one of the great luxury trades of the early Middle Ages and beyond. Walrus ivory provided the material for the carving of book covers, reliquary caskets, private seals and gaming pieces. We know the material, we have the possible date, but determining what our object is, what function it served, is rather more difficult. The most common idea is that the object is a bobbin. Bobbins served and still serve an important function in embroidery and sewing. It is around the bobbin that yarn or thread is wrapped. The evidence for this could be on the stem of the object, which has fine circular lines that might just be the impression made by gold or silk thread. If the object was indeed a bobbin, we can only guess at what luxury items it helped create, perhaps a handsome wall hanging to decorate the great hall, or perhaps an embroidery to rival the Bayer tapestry. We can only guess at the earliest owners of our object, but its discovery in Norwich Castle speaks of its connection to the household of one of the principal occupants of the keep, the Sheriff of Norfolk. It is tempting, for instance, to associate our object with the remarkable Robert Fitzwalter, who served as sheriff in the 1120s, and his equally remarkable wife, Sibylla. The events of their adventures in France, which led to the foundation of the Priory of Horsham St. Faith, were later depicted in wall paintings at the Priory. Amid all the speculation, there is one thing we can be sure about. This is the 
evocative power of this small, silent, but captivating object. In its design and shape, a unique survival from Anglo-Norman England. The little luxury ivory object serves as a striking reminder of the richness of the interiors of Norwich Castle in the earliest phase of its existence. Thank you for watching and be sure to explore more talking objects from the Norwich Castle Museum and Art Gallery. Thank you.